Well, hey everybody, I want to welcome you back to another of our video devotions. Hope you're having a great day today. Uh, hope things are good with your family. Hope things are good with your business and work and jobs. And um, we recognize that there's quite a few people that have um, really been impacted from a financial standpoint with this. Um, uh, things slow down in the marketplace. Uh, there's layoffs and there's reduction in hours worked and things of that nature. And we know that there's a lot of people that are really wrestling with that. And so uh, I just want you to know that our prayers are going out to you, uh, that we definitely don't want you to struggle alone. And so if you have needs, if there are things that we can do to come alongside of you, we would love to invite you to do that, uh, to reach out to us, to let us know that you're struggling, to let us know what's happening in your life so that we can pray and lift you up. And uh, hopefully you'll do that. If you know somebody that is wrestling, if you know somebody that's hurting, if you know someone that has lost a job or has been laid off, please notify us and uh, see what we can do to help. We would love to do that. We definitely um, don't want people to be hurting uh, and, and, not, and not have anybody to help them and at least come alongside of them. So let us know about that. We'd love to pray about those things. I uh, want to encourage you to share these videos. I want to encourage you to invite people to join us on Sundays for our live stream on either this Facebook page or on YouTube. And uh, we certainly want you to take advantage of that opportunity. The, the great news is that the, the gospel is still the gospel, right? The good news is still the good news. The, the fact that Jesus came, died, and rose again is still the same good news, whether we get to share it in person or whether we get to share it digitally and uh, virtually online and so the idea of ministry doesn't stop the idea that we are praying for baptisms doesn't stop the idea that we're praying for marriages to be healed and for families to be reconciled and for god to work about drawing men and women and children to life in him doesn't stop and so we want the church to go forward right the church is not a building the church is the called out people of god um and so we're called to live differently in this world, and that doesn't stop. So we need your help. We don't want you to stop praying for the lost. We don't want you to stop inviting people to join us in what we're doing. So a lot of things going on like that, but I wanted just to encourage you. Uh, if you were with us yesterday, we launched into a brand new thing on uh, our morning devotions where we are going to just walk through some of the books of Psalms, some of the chapters in the book of Psalms. Uh, I asked that yesterday if you could to chime in and let me know some of the favorite psalms that you have. What are some of the what are some of the chapters in the book of Psalms that speak to you? And if you missed us yesterday, Psalms is a collection of uh, actually a lot of hymns, old songs that they would have used in temple worship back in um, ancient times. Uh, some of the songs and some of the psalms are very positive and very uplifting and just giving glory to God. Some of them are, are rather somber. Some of them are rather dark in, in, in that the writers of some of the Psalms were speaking from really challenging seasons of life where they feared their life and they were just crying out to God. And so in all of these different things that we see in the Psalms, God is speaking to us uh, and encouraging us. And I wanted to be an encouragement again today in what we're going to read. Um, it's really hard to pick which Psalms to go through, and so I wanted to kind of just, I don't know, walk through a couple different ones from a different a couple different angles. Uh, obviously, we're not going to cover all of them because there's uh, a, a ton of Psalms in uh, the Bible. But today, we're going to be rooted in Psalm chapter 8, and uh, we're going to kind of walk through this uh, and um, go through not chronological order, but at least how they're laid out in the Psalms. And so we'll work our way toward 100, Psalm 150. Um, and so today I want to look at Psalm 8. And I love the, the text here. I love what happens as David writes this. So this is King David writing these words. And, and David says in Psalm 8, verse 1, he says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens and I love that that phrase that that idea that how majestic is your name how how wonderful is your name how powerful is your name how great is your name that we should lift it up that we should glorify your name we should praise you for what you've done that's a good reminder to us and then he says we you have and psalmist uh, David says you have set your glory 
in the heavens. I love the idea of glory. Glory means praise or to lift up. And, and God in all that he has created is glorified, right? Uh, we're going to read later in the book of Psalms, most likely, where it says that the heavens declare the glory of God. The, the heavens, the stars, and the moon, and everything that he has set in place, they give glory to God. They give him praise for how good he is. But then he changes scenes, he changes thoughts. And in verse 3, David says, When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? He goes on in verse 5, You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put them... You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, animals in the wild, birds in the sky, fish in the sea uh, that swim in the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A couple of reminders that come out of this text that I think is really incredible. One is that out of all the things that our God has made, he brags about us. He brags about mankind, that mankind is his kind of crowning achievement in this uh, creative world that he, um, the, he instituted. That of all the things that he made, right? The sun and the moon and the stars and the universe and plants and animals and fish and everything that we can think of on the earth, we are the thing, human beings, you and I are the thing that God adores the most. Uh, we are the ones that he sent his son to die for that he desires us in a relationship, uh, that he desires us to be with him in eternity forever. I'm not saying that God isn't going to have animals in heaven, right? But it is us that Jesus came to die for, to pave the way for us to come back to God. Verse 4 says something significant. It says, um, it says, What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care about us? human beings that you care about us. And I, I think that's an on, a really amazing statement that God cares about us. I don't know if you've ever stopped just to think about that uh, and the, the magnitude of that statement that God cares for us. Uh, Peter says it in 1 Peter chapter 5 that, that we can cast our cares and our anxieties on our Father in heaven because he cares for us. So when we say that phrase that he cares for us, um, what does that really mean? Think about your own life. What is something that you care for? Uh, and if you care for something, what does that mean? Um, it means that it matters to you. It means that you're, it's valuable to you. It means that if something if you care for something, you're concerned about it. You're watchful over that thing. Uh, even I would say that if you care for something and like that God cares for us, that you are empathetic toward that thing that you love and you care about. You're empathetic toward the struggle that it might have. And that speaks volumes to us. That means that God in our struggle and in our hardship and in the different seasons in life that we go through, that God is mindful of us. He is watching us. That He is empathetic toward our struggle. The Bible also tells us that he knows us intimately. Um, Verse 4 says, What is man that you are mindful of them? Who, who are we that God is mindful of us? Uh, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, that God knows even the number of hair on our head, right? Some of us have limited number of hair on our head now, but he still knows them, right? And, and what that means is that God knows us intimately. That God is not just some absent father, that he's in glory, right? Um, and, and he's not connected to us, that he's not uh, engaged in our life. That's not our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven knows about us. He knows about our struggles. He knows everything about us. And if he knows the number of hair on our head, then certainly he knows about the fear that maybe you're experiencing because of this um, pandemic. That, that he certainly knows about um, our apprehension um, and our frustration about what's going on. He, he understands about your fears that you're facing. He understands um, about the, the financial burden that maybe you're encountering right now. He knows uh, about your insecurities. God knows about them, 
and he cares about them. He is empathetic toward our plight. And that is an encouragement to us today because we know that he is not absent, right? Verse 4 says again that he is mindful of us. He is, he, think about this, he is thinking about you today. The, the, the Father in heaven, the God of the universe that spoke this world in, in the creation is thinking about us. He is watching over us today. He is concerned about the affairs of your life today. And I want you to take courage in that, that he is not an absent father. He is someone who is connected to us. He is mindful of your life and your struggle. And so we want you to be encouraged in that today. Let me pray for us as we wrap up. God, thank you. Thank you, God, that you are present with us. Uh, your scripture, your word tells us that you uh, don't leave us as orphans, but you come to us. And so we know that you are present with us through the indwelling work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we also know, God, that we are not alone in this world because you have given us the fellowship of believers that can encourage us and hold us accountable. Uh, God, we read in the scripture here today that uh, that you are mindful of uh, our affairs. You are aware of the struggles that we have. You are uh, concerned about the things that we wrestle with. And so, God, we take great delight in that that you know about us and you have not um, you have not distanced yourself from us. So God, I pray that today we would just be encouraged by that, that we would know you are present, that whatever we wrestle with, whatever the struggle today, God, we know that you are present with us and you are healing us, you are uh, giving us what we need to, uh, to make it through these difficult seasons. God, we ask your favor, especially over people that are wrestling financially today, uh, that there's a lot of fear that comes with financial insecurity. And uh, I pray, God, that you would provide um, everyone's for everyone's needs uh, according to the riches that are in Christ Jesus. We trust those things to you, God. We pray for you to bless our day, that we might be a blessing to others, that we might encourage someone else, that we would continue to be the church wherever we go, God, because we know that you are present with us. So bless us, and uh, we look forward to uh, spending time with you today in our devotion and our prayer time today. God, we love you. Thank you for loving us and caring about us and showing us that in Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Hey, everybody. Hope you have a great day. Be a blessing to someone else. And we look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow morning. God bless.